Welcome to the KO Boxing Show. Haven't we got a massive show tonight? None other than former WBC World Heavyweight Champion, Pinkland, Pinky, Thomas. Welcome to the KO Boxing Show. Right on, Peter. It's glad, I'm glad to be here, man. Great to have you on, champ. Pinkland, let's go to that magic moment when you, it was August 1984, what was the feeling like when you won a WBC heavyweight world title up against Tim Witherspoon? Um, Peter, it was um, it was it was uh, it was a classic, man. Because I uh, we both had trainers. He had a trainer, Slim Perkins from South Philly. I had Georgie Ben from North, and uh, they fought each other, I guess, in the pro, the amateurs, what have you. And they both had, you know, Philadelphia style. So, um, you know, uh, it was a challenge to me because he had only had six amateur fights. I had three. He had been working with Muhammad Ali, and I hadn't been working with nobody. I walked in off the street. So, yeah. you know, it was a challenge, man, you know, because I wanted to um, display Georgie Ben skills. I'm sure he wanted to display Slim Perkins skills. And um, and one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to outclass him. I wanted to outbox him. I uh, wanted to outmaneuver him. And uh, I did it. And uh, But, of course, you know, not in an adventurous way, only in the ring. Outside of the ring, you know, me and Tim is the greatest of friends. Awesome, awesome. Also, your first defense against Mike Weaver. What can you remember about that? Mike Weaver was in the was in the Rocky movies because he had that fantastic Adonis type of physique, didn't he? Yeah, no, he wasn't in the Rocky movie, I don't think. But um, you know, uh, looking back on the fights of Force when he fought like Big John Tate, knocked him out in the last thirteen seconds of the fifteenth uh, round uh, when he fought. He fought Larry Holmes. Um, uh, I think he went out in about 13. But he's a one hell of a puncher. Got great conditioning. Uh, had all the muscles, you know, that very intimidating. Yeah. Had a lot of experience. Remember, man, you know, I probably had the least amount of experience of any pro, especially heavyweight that ever come up. Um, so I had to, I really had to bite the bullet, man. And I had, I had to have more heart, I think, than experience to get through what I had to get to, to, to get to where I wanted to go. And um, that's what, that's what pushed me through. I think it was my heart and my, and my left jab. That came naturally. Yeah, I was going to say that you had one of the best left jabs in boxing. And that is something that obviously you said come naturally because it was a beautiful jab. You used to time it coming in. It was similar to all the great jabs like Ali and Holmes, and and you you were blessed with one of them. Your fight with uh, Trevor Burbick, it was close to fight of the year. It was such a close fight. But sadly, you lost your world heavyweight title. How did you feel losing that fight? Well, you know, it was a lot going on. It was really a lot going on at that time. And then... Uh, it was a political move, you know, a political move that I really don't want to get into. You know, I just think that if, um, you know, um, I, you know, I, I, I wasn't with um, me and Burbick was the only ones that wasn't connected with the uh, King uh, organization at that time. And um, I think about a week before the fight, they got to Burbick. He signed with them, and um, you know, you know. Of course, who you think they were going to go with if it went to distance, you know? So, um, you know, it, it was a political move. I mean, I'm not saying that you know I should have won the fight no matter what, but I mean, I think the fight was close enough. It wasn't a knockdown. I wasn't stretched out. I was world champion. Um, uh, I think if I was um, a little bit more in the clique, I probably would have uh, still held my title. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's go to the probably the one of the biggest 
profile fights, your fight with Mike Tyson in May 1987. You had the great Angelo Dundee in your corner. It was for the WBC and WBA World Heavyweight titles. You were the number one heavyweight. What can you remember about that fight? Uh, again, a lot going on, man. You know, uh, well, you know, Mike came out strong as he always do uh, with all his opponents. He, uh, you know, came out. And I anticipated the first, uh, first, second, th first, second round to be, uh, you know, real compact. But after the um, second round, man, I began to maintain control. I wasn't getting hit. Um, I was slipping, slap, tying him up. I started using the jab. Uh, uh, the, win, the third round was about even. The, uh, fourth round, I think I won. The fifth round, I think I pulled that off too. And uh, at that time, you know, it was a um, something happened. My glove split, and um, that was right at the time at the end of the fifth. I told him, I said, I said, young blood, I said, your uh, is out. And uh, <laughs> you know, and I, you know, I was going, I was going. I was going to take him to the cleaners, you know. I was going to, I think I had about another two or three rounds and I would have got him. But um, unfortunately, you know, my glove split. They had to cut it off for me. It took another 10 minutes for him to give me another one. By the magic of TV, you know, they spliced it together, made it. It was still 200, two minutes and 15 seconds went by before uh, it came back where they spliced it. But it was about 10 minutes that went by. So I was really frustrated, upset. Uh, Tyson and Kevin Rooney, I'm watching them hugging. Kevin Rooney telling him with bad intentions, jump on him. And they had a fight plan. And I was sitting there with my glove off. And, you know, I was really just teed off. And just when they came back with my glove, they threw it to Angelo and said, Angelo, hurry up, put the glove on him. The bell getting ready to ring. And, before he could get the glove on my hand, good, the bell rung. And of course, I ain't have a fight plan or nothing. But the plan was because I went into the fight with a broken right shoulder. And um, so I was, uh, you know, just using the jab. I had to, you know, formulate a whole different plan for the fight. It broke me from my plan. After I got hit with one shot, it, I dropped my right hand. I couldn't hold it up because that's the one that was broke. And, um, you know, I got hit with 17, 18 unanswered punches. And I went down. And the only thing I really wanted to do was to get back up because I didn't want to be counted out on the canvas. And um, no, I couldn't continue, but I, I did get back up. And um, so, you know, that's the way that fight went. Only, only me, Mike Tyson, and the Lord know what was going on in that fight. <laughs> yeah, it, Pink, Pinklin, if I had to ask you, what was Mike Tyson like as a person when you met him and a competitor? Obviously, before the fight, everyone's different. He would have been trying to intimidate you, and you're not friendly. But obviously, you've seen Mike since then, and you've experienced Mike as a person. What's Mike Tyson like as a person? Well, Mike is not like he was when he was fighting. Mike is a better person now. Uh, Mike, when he was coming up, you know, uh, you know, he had this little twitch. He, he, uh, 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 Jim Jacobs and, um, uh, well, Jim Jacobs was my guy. You know, Jim Jacobs was the one who made the fight. But uh, for, for us to come together, but Mike was real, he was an honorary young blood who just didn't care about nothing. And they uh, was really sheltering him and covering everything that he did. I remember the press conference uh, we had in New York, I think it was at Sardis. And, um, you know, Don King raised both our hands and, you know, I, uh, you know, he was, you know, uh, announcing a fight. And I turned around and I stuck my fist in his face and I said, boy, I said, when 
when I when I bring his jab back, I'm gonna snatch that gold out of your mouth, you know. <laughs> and uh, he said some vulgar words to me, you know. But after the next day, uh, it was like all I could hear was about you know my how I live, and never cover nothing about what he said to disrespect to me or what have you. So, I mean, like, but that's, you know, that's just part of the game, I guess, you know, they just bring the kid along and, uh, you know, that's where it went, you know? So um, I ain't got nothing, I ain't got nothing bad to say about Mike, man. I love Mike, man. I, you know, when Mike went to prison, man, I was so upset because yeah. I called Angelo and I told Angelo, man, I'm going behind the walls. He said, for what? I said, man, I'm gonna go back there. I'm gonna see Mike, man. I'm gonna knock some sense in his head, or we gonna fight like hell. And he said, Pink, man, you know, I don't think you're gonna even gonna get, be able to get close to him, you know, because he was with the, the, you know, the Muslims who was at that time. He had just, you know, become one. And uh, he said, you're not gonna be able to get close to this kid. So I was, I was really hurt when uh, that, you know, that situation situation happened to my but since then you know of course we had the uh, king of the rings about five years ago where all the heavyweights come together and stuff and we uh just had a good time together and mike's a hell of a nice guy i, I, I just got a lot of respect for mike now that's awesome pinkland also angelo dundee what is the most probably influential thing you've learned from him as a person that you've carried on to life because he was such a legendary trainer what did he teach you as a human being that you can carry on that's away from boxing? What were some of the characteristics that were strong with him? Oh, Angelo was, was Angelo was like my, oh man, my trainer, my mentor, my dad. Uh, he was everything, man. He was a guy who uh, I could call in the morning, the night, in the afternoon, anytime. We talk, he, same way with me, you know. He would introduce me to everybody. He always told me I was the greatest. I said, no, Ali's the greatest. He said, no, nah, man, you're the greatest. I said, Ali the greatest. And he said, no, nah, man, you're the greatest. And I said, what you talking about, man? And he said, he, what he was talking about was the way I had changed my life around and become clean off of drugs and, and uh, learning how to live again and doing the right thing, you know? And he thought that was one of the greatest things that could ever happen, you know? And um, he was just uh, a humble guy. I learned so much from Angelo. Uh, I just can't even speak on it. And um, and uh, as of today, man, I still miss that buddy. I still miss that old man. He's just, just a classic guy, you know? Yeah, That's great good. motivator, great motivator, and um, just used to great really... Great motivator, great inspirator. He, um, he knew how to pull off the tricks. He, he, he um, I learned so much from him. You know, I use a lot of stuff that I learned from Angelo, um, you know, as of today, you know. So, I mean, like, uh, I've had some great trainers, you know, with Georgie Benton. Um, uh, you know, I played with Emmanuel a little bit. We had some time together, and um, Bobby McQuilla and and Scrap Iron Johnson. I had a lot of old timers where I learned a lot of old school stuff. You know, wow. and uh, and they taught me they taught me the tricks of the trade. You know, um, but uh, Angelo all around was uh, probably. Uh, one of the best. Wow. Wow. Let's go over the end part of your career. You fought Evander Holyfield, Tommy Morrison, and Riddick Bowe. What were they all like to fight? Because they're all, they were all pretty explosive heavyweights at the time. Yeah, man. Well, you know, when I uh, fought Evander in 88, I fought, first I fought Mike in 88. Seven, I think I was in, I was, I wasn't 100%. I wasn't, I was in my addiction. I wasn't living good. 
I, you know, I wasn't doing the right thing, but I was, I was, a, I was in, I was, I went to camp, I was in great shape. I was doing a number on Mike. I had a fight plan until my shoulder broke six weeks before the fight. I called Andrew and told him what had happened. He told me that I need to pull out. I said, no, I'm gonna beat the guy with my left jab. I never told Don King because I didn't want to pull out the fight. Yeah. And uh, Angelo had eye contact. We knew when, you know, where and how, when it would pop out, you know. And uh, so that's the way that fight went. Then when I fought Evander Holyfield, uh, I just got deeper and I sunk deeper in the water and um, just wasn't 100% going into the fight. And Evander was, he had fought Tillis first. And, uh, you know, and then after he fought Tillis, he went to distance, I think, with Tillis, I'm not sure. And then, then me and him fought. And uh, it was, uh, you know, I, I, he, he outspared me. I, I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't in no type of shape for that fight, you know. And then when I fought Tommy Morrison, it was uh, about the same, you know. Um, and I, I have nothing bad to say about neither one of them guys, you know. I, I befriended, I became friends with all of them. Yeah. Um, I respect them all. Um, they were all great fighters and, um, had, you know, great personalities, man. No, no, you're a great man as well. Pinkland, thank you for your time. Before we sign you off, we've got to acknowledge my dad, a friend of yours from down under in Australia. He's got the Bondi Boxing Gym. And, of course, you. we should invite you out to uh, Sydney one time. Once COVID and all this stuff clears out, we'd love to have you down under. Pinkland, you can sample the great steaks down here and and all the great food and environment. So, yeah. um, I would, I would. I would love that, man. Yeah, my dad, man, you know, his training with Jimmy Williams over here, and he was a great, he loved great G, he loved Jimmy Williams, man, and uh, Jimmy was a great guy. But, uh, you know, and I've, I've had to console him. I mean, he's brought tears in his eyes to talk about <laughs> it. But so we've, uh, we're, we're good friends, you know. I've learned a lot. And he learned a lot from Jimmy. He learned a lot from me. He learned a lot from different trainers. Uh, he was in the Mayweather's camp. This guy, is a, he's got a lot of experience up on his belt. He just need to put it to work now. He need to be, he need to be able to become the teacher that I know he's going to become. And in the near future, you're going to hear some good stuff about me, Dad. When all this COVID stuff is gone, you know, I think he's going to really begin to make some noise. But, you know, we just got to wait until the time, until the air clear, you know. Awesome work, Pinkland. Pinky Thomas, what a career, former WBC World Heavyweight Champion. Thank you for your time, my friend, and thank you for being on the KA Boxing hey, Show. You know, let me say one more thing, man. Um, you know, I'm being inducted into the National Boxing Hall of Fame out in California, Montebello, California. Uh, it's 20... 21 and 22 all being inducted because of the COVID. Um, you know, it's funny. I have never fought out there in California. You have to be up fought in the state. But they're inducting me because of the man who I am, my personality, the way I carry myself and what I do for other people. And that's what's important to me is how uh, uh, lives and, and, and to, to give back and that's what's important to me right now. Uh, so I, I ain't knock out a whole bunch of guys. I ain't win a bunch of world titles, but I got there probably faster than anybody ever got there. And, um, you know, came out of nowhere to become somebody. So I'm just grateful, glad, and uh, for all those who are in recovery and who uh, who's out there in the jungle, you know, fighting the lions and the tigers and the bears. Yeah, you better get out of there, jump out of the water with the crack down, and get on the surface and start living good and living the right way and get away from all the craziness because, you know, there's too much life. Thank you, Pinkland, for your time. Awesome once again to have you on the show, my friend. Take care, and we're going to have to have you back on soon. Thank you. 
God bless you. Thank you. Peter. Thank you. Hey, Dad.